All right, hey, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons, and specifically we're going to talk about one-hour Dungeons & Dragons, and I'm going to give a field report for Session 2 of Last Rites and Laser Sights, the contract killer um, contemporary story that I'm using uh, current edition Dungeons & Dragons uh, to run, which I'm very excited about, and it's a one-on-one game. I have one player, and I'm dungeon mastering. We meet every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., and we make a night of it. It's really fun, and uh, and this is my report on session two. All right, so here's what happens in session two. So Sean Hartfield, the contract killer, uh, played by my Hogan player, um, is uh, is in Atlanta, and he has just finished a contract kill on a Boston drug dealer who cut some material wrong and killed a killed the son of an incredibly rich uh, MIT student. Right, so. So basically, uh, the, the, done, the job is done, and so um, Sean Hartfield gives a call and says, uh, you know, to Alabaster Dove, his handler, and she says, it's done, and she's like, that's great, fantastic, let's get you out of town, right? Because essentially he goes in, he does the job, and then they just physically move him, right, to another town. And so Alabaster Dove says, hey, great job on the job, you're fully paid, but listen, um, I I owe somebody a favor, and and you can help me out by completing that favor. And uh, the favor is um, there's a very uh, there's an up and coming rapper, and he just had an incident in in Atlanta. There was an attempt on his life, and his uh, and his security really bungled it up, and he barely escaped with his life. Right, and actually he was grazed on his on his right arm. It was pretty bad. But his security is not doing great, and this rapper, Fatty Scraps, um, is very upset, and he wants improvement on his security in contingent. I want you to fly with I want to get you to Washington, D.C. As, fa- as fast as possible. He's flying out tonight from Atlanta in about two hours. I want you on his plane, and I want you to just observe his security as he has flown from Atlanta to Washington, and then give Fatty Scraps your your opinion on what should happen with the security, right? And so, so um, uh, the contract killer, Sean uh, Hartfield, says, yep, I'm done. Uh, yeah, absolutely, I'll do this for you. He goes, he gets on the Learjet with Fatty Scraps and Fatty Scraps two, um, two security guards. They have a very fun ride back to Washington, D.C. They partake, and, um, and basically all of the... Um, all of Fatty Scraps two is two um, is two security guards. Uh, Sean Hartfield is able to watch them, right? And so Sean is offered, you know, uh, recreational substances, and he says, "No, you know, like I'm good uh, to Washington. I want to focus, and so I'm not going to." But then Fatty Scraps security guards do with Fatty Scraps, right? And so on the other end of the plane ride, when they arrive in Washington D.C. Um, you know, uh, actually, uh, the two security guard, uh, uh, actually Fatty Scrap says, Hey, you two security guards, go, uh, go check the Escalade outside. Maybe make sure it's ready for me. I'll be out in five. Right. And so he has a quick conversation with Sean Hartfield and Sean Hartfield goes, tell me about these, these guys, where'd you get them? And, uh, Fatty Scrap says, these guys are my day ones. They came up from, you know, they were with me. I came out of San Diego and they were my best buds and now they're my security. And you know, and uh, Sean Hartfield's like Fatty Scraps. You gotta, you gotta fire both of them, right? And the reason why is one, they're not trained to security, and two, they're not watching out for you, right? Like, you know, they should have been, uh, you know, like honestly, every time they're around you and every time they're doing their job, they should be hyper focused. They should be joining you in the frivolities, right? Whoever you got as your entourage, that's their job, right? They have fun with you, but if they're you know, if they're your security, they, they should never be partaking with you, right? So the reality is you got to fire them both. And Fatty Scraps is like, hey, man, these guys have been with me for like nine years. What can I do? And he's like, hey, you know, the reality is you have an entourage, right? And the fang- and, and frankly, you should not move them from your security to your entourage. You're firing them, right? And the reality is you should, you know, what I would do if you got the cheddar is give them 50 grand a piece and tell them you're done. And I, you know, and, and, and cut them off. Don't put them in your entourage and stop letting them be your security. And I'm going to send, and I'm going to send you a number. You're going to call this. He's going to give you two guys tomorrow 
and these guys, they will kill for you, and and basically you will never ever be in the position you were before because these guys are professionals and they're going to be professional every moment of the day. So the reality is, you can just you know give them whatever you can give them, fifty grand a piece, send them up, send them back, it it's done, right? They they're not serving you, right? So Fatty Scraps is like, I don't like your answer, but I'm going to do what you say. Thank you very much, I appreciate it, and then. Sean Hartfield and Fatty Scraps go their own way. Of course, of course Sean Hartfield is using a, a pseudonym whenever he's talking to anybody. He never gives his real name to anyone. He did give Sarah his first name, Sean, right? So uh, so basically, they go their own ways, right? And, um, and at this point, um, so basically, then at this point, uh, Sean Hartfield is done with the job. He's finished with the job. But he's had less than 24 hours, so he. So I said, you know, what is Sean going to do? He's like, I, I need to spin down. So I'm going to check into a hotel, and I'm going to take just 48 hours to do nothing, but just relax, have a few meals, watch some games, you know, watch some, some basketball, and I'm just going to spin down, right? And I'm like, no worries, understood, right? So second day on his stay, he's in the, he goes downstairs in the hotel he's in, and all he does is just relax, and um, and uh, and he's down in the lobby, and he's getting some OJ and some breakfast, right at the like the bar where they also serve breakfast, right? And he just wanted to be out of his room, and like um, and and so he's just relaxing, right? So I tell him, you know, you're and actually you're reading a book, and he, uh, oh yeah. So at this point, uh, I'm telling him you're you're thumbing through like a table book in this very nice lobby area after finishing your, finishing your breakfast and a woman walks through the lobby and you, you and, and I'm like make an insight check right so he uses the plus one on his uh his you know on his intelligence and um oh, I'm sorry wisdom and uh he and he makes the role and I was like you recognize this woman right this is Esther Hall and so I explained you actually did a job with Esther Hall the two of you together killed a person who made a major innovation in um, in uh, hollow point technology, hollow point ammunition technology. And the reason why you guys killed him is he had been doing all this work in his home in his home work uh, workbench, right? And had made this major innovation and he wasn't sharing it with the munitions company he worked for, right? He was doing a lot of work at, uh, he was doing a lot of work at the company's workshop and he used to go at home and he was finishing these tweaks and he was making this major innovation that he was going to use himself, right? Well, somebody gave a tip off. The two of them go kill him, get all of his information and hand it over to uh, to um, Alabaster Dove who shared it with a few other handlers and now literally only the contract killer world has these special bullets, right? And so Esther Hall had done this job with him. They completed the job and then they went their own separate ways, right? So I said, you, um, you worked with her, you guys got the job done, but it didn't go well. You felt that she was very frosty, she was incredibly professional, and she had no interest in, uh, in any kind of a friendship or professional goodwill. You found her to be very cold and heartless, and, but highly professional, right? And I said, so you see her, she doesn't see you, do you want to just duck and go back to your room, or do you want to interact with her, right? He says, I want to interact with her. So he goes over and he said, and he says, "Hey, Esther," and she says, "Hey, good to see you, right?" And um, oh, and then I, also at this point, this guy, my my contract killer, does not have a name, uh, like a professional name, right? So that's probably going to get un- unveiled at one of these uh, sessions. And she says, "Hey, I haven't seen you in a minute, right?" And he goes, "Yeah, that's right. It's been a while. You know, we did that last job pretty well together." Um, and she goes, "Yeah, that did go well, but here's the problem." You're, you're still with Alabaster Dove, correct? And he says, yeah, that's right. She treats me really well. And she goes, well, here's the problem. You took a job in South Dakota that was mine, right? And that was 75 k and you're going to pay me that right now. And she, he's like, what? Right? And she goes, yeah, you owe me 75000 k And frankly, you need to tell Alabaster Dove that she shouldn't be even bidding on my jobs. Right? And he goes, well, hey, listen professional courtesy, you know, Alabaster Dove, Dove just takes whatever job she's going to take, and and she says, yeah, that's right, I'm telling you right now to your face, you're going to stop, you don't take any of my jobs, and Alabaster Dove needs to check in with my handler before she takes anything, 
And he goes, like, what are you talking about? Like, he's like, hey, you know, you're getting a little, you're getting a little uppity here. And she goes, yes, I am. You want to know why? And he says, yeah, why are you being disrespectful like this? And this is all being talked about in the middle of a lobby, right? Like, you know, you know a hotel lobby. And, and he's already bitten off more. Than, and she goes, here's, here's the thing. I heard you went white hat. You are soft. I could take you right now. So you're going to pay me the 75 grand and you're going to have Alabaster check in. And frankly, you're going to stay out of my way going forward, right? And he's like, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I did go white hat, but I ain't lost my edge. And she goes, and she goes I think you have. Right, and then they're like, and I'm like, roll for initiative, right? And he goes, what? And I'm like, yeah, roll for initiative, right? And so like, and sure enough, she you know pulls a, a, a knife straight out and goes to kill him right there in the lobby, right? And so uh, so he rolls, right? He's able to block uh, her knife, right? And he attempts to do a disarm on her and is unable to disarm her. And then and 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 he's like, I'm going to see if I can talk to her you know, to, to kind of settle this down. And I told him, you are absolutely, you know, you're, you're fine to attempt to talk to her, but you can see from her speed and momentum that she, that for her talking is done. Right. And he's like, Oh man, I don't want to kill this chick. Right. And, and I'm like, what's your next move? Right. And he goes, I'm going to take out my pistol and I'm going to present it. You know, I'm going to tell, I'm going to, I'm going to point it right at her to let her know that if she keeps this up, she's going to die. Right. And so he pulls out his pistol, he puts it up. She attempts to disarm him, and he uh, and he actually is able to stop her from disarming her, and then he shoots her in the stomach. She falls on the ground and is writhing, and he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk forward with my, with my weapon down. Does it look like she's going for another weapon? I said, it absolutely looks like she's going for another weapon. It looks like she has a, a revolver in her boot. Right, and he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of it, and he puts another one into her head, right there, kills her right in the lobby, right, and like so. Oh, and and by the way, um, so at this point, uh, he kills her in the lobby, but this family has come out of the, um, come out of the the uh, elevator. The daughter starts screaming, and the and all the hotel staff are terrified. And I was like, you have the ability to bolt and go up the elevator that Jay just went through and leave all this chaos, right? And he's like, little girl's crying and the staff are scared. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to tell the little girl it's okay that the ambulance is on the way. And I'm going to I'm gonna tell the staff, hey, it's okay and try to calm them. And so he lets the elevator close, right? And sure enough, um, he goes to check her just to see if she's dead or not. She is dead. And by that time, uh, I say the police are running in. You actually, you hear the police, uh, the si- you hear the sirens, and the police are literally running in the front door. And so he bursts down, runs through the hall, runs up five flights of stairs, and then is going to try to circuitously make his route to 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 the uh, to the top of the um, of the hotel window, right? So he does that, and. Um, and, and, and so t- trying to get to the hotel roof, right? To find a, to, to jump from roof to roof, get into another building and escape, right? Well, young police officer gets up there and blocks the end of the hall, right? And so I said, hey, are you going? And, and I said, your positioning is that you can rush at the police officer, knock him down, disarm him. You might knock him down, down the flight of stairs. You could even knock him out the window and he'll take a five foot, st- foot fall. Or you can try to run down the hall, but this is, that's very unwise because he's going to have a he's going to the police officer is going to have an entire hallway to aim at you and then shoot you in the back, right? And he's like, I can't harm a, a, a police officer, so I'm going to run down the hallway. Police officer shoots him right through the lung, knocks him out, right? He's stabilized and he wakes up in a hospital, right? And that is, um, and that is just part one of session two. I'll tell you the second part of one of session two, but that was part A of session two. Uh, thank you very much for letting me share it with you. Please consider liking and subscribing. Also, I would love to know, do you have any ideas for how I can build people who would go on the kill list or ways I can challenge Sean Whitefield, the contract killer, or any any story branching ideas that you think would be cool? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.